Hello, my name is Sekiyama, Division of Materials Physics, Graduate School of Engineering Science, Osaka University, Japan. In this movie, I would like to show the selection rule in the optical process of transition of the electron originally bound to nuclei of atom or ion. Not only the rule for the linearly polarized photons, but also those for unpolarized and circularly polarized photons are explained. Further, the higher order transitions such as electric quadrupole and magnetic dipole ones are briefly touched in addition to the electric dipole transition. I hope that the audience has already learned the Fermi's Golden Rule for the optical transition in the movie entitled as Fermi's Golden Rule, as shown here. Please enjoy this movie. So before directly going to the uh, one photon process, we need to consider the one realistic situation. Up to now, only we consider one electron, but in reality, there are so many electrons in solids and only when we restrict it in the atom, the number of the electron is Z, equivalent to the atomic number. That means the number of electrons is multiplied. Then uh, the electron Hamiltonian is exactly like this one. And now we consider that only one electron is excited among the, its electrons. Then further we calculate the exponential function. This is in the quantized spectral potential and we expand this exponential function like this. So then we obtain these terms. So this is a, a first term and I would like to say that this term is predominant called as electric dipole transition. So we can evaluate the exponential function of IKR like this. K is a wave number inversely proportional to the wavelength lambda. And here R stands for the moving distance of the electron around the atom. So therefore the mean value of Rj, Rj prime is less than Lattice constant A. Oh, sorry. So this A is different from this one. So this is a lattice constant. Okay. Then the K dot R is evaluated as this value. The problem is this value is much larger than 1 or much smaller than 1. Now we consider the lambda as in the ultraviolet region, a rather short wavelength slide, for instance, a 10, nan uh, 10 nanometer or something. The, this is, yeah, this is in the kind of soft X-ray, a uh, photon energy of 120 electron volt, much shorter wavelengths than the visible light. And further, we consider the lattice constant A is about the 4 angstrom or something like that. Therefore, the maximum A is evaluated as 0.4 nanometer then this value is much, much less than 1. Okay? Therefore, this exponential function, the maximum term is the first term, and second term, third term, can be negligible when the wavelength is longer. So this is called as long waves approximation, whereas this function is approximated as 1. Then we continue the discussion. Under the disapproximation, we need to set the direction of the polarization E. Here we assume that the electric field is along the Z direction, direction of the quantization of electron. Then we consider the computation relation between the electron Hamiltonian and Z. Since J's Z component, Zj, is commute for the momentum of the other electron and Zj is commute to the all other potential. Therefore, this calculation is equivalent to this one. Then we calculate this one, we added these two terms and 
we get uh, this one is this one and this one then we get this result and further uh, we pay attention that this calculation gives a uh, minus ih bar then we know that this amount is proportional to the p okay this one therefore the first term is equivalent to the this one then we expand uh, this term like this and we add the Hamiltonian on the these two states and we get uh, this result and finally first term is calculated as this one under the long wavelength approximation so this stands for the probability of the electric dipole transition okay so in the case of the electric field is along the z direction probability uh, or this term can be evaluated as this one uh, now we consider the electrons are bound to nucleus and uh, especially for the initial state the electrons are strongly bound expressed by using the radial function times uh, spherical harmonics like this also for the final state unoccupied state more or less uh, we can express the unoccupied final state as a linear combination of the atomic orbital but for simplicity here we consider the single atom then the final state is also expressed by the unoccupied atomic orbital like this one then the calculation of the, this term becomes a one electron problem like this so this is the uh, initial state of the electron originally occupied state and uh, this state phi f stands for the excited state here we assume that uh, both states are described by using the wave functions uh, like this then we remember that z is expressed by using the radial distance rj times cosine theta this theta is used in the spherical harmonics and z is also proportional to the spherical harmonics y10 therefore this calculation is equivalent to this one then the problem is uh, integral of the spherical harmonics for the angle phi phi dependence is simply expressed by using the exponential function and therefore this amount is zero when the m prime is different from m it is known that this value is finite only when the m prime is the same as m we can understand the nature of this one and further the l prime is l plus minus one in the optical transition electric dipole transition the excited state is so limited then we go to the uh, another case the case of the electric field is along the x direction by the same manner we can understand that since the electric field is x direction uh, this part should be replaced by x that's correct and further we need to consider that x is expressed by using the linear combination of the spherical harmonics y11 and y11 minus 1 in the case of z z is proportional to the spherical harmonics y10 then we need to calculate uh, this one so in this case uh, uh, middle spherical harmonics this is not zero therefore this value is finite when the m prime is m plus minus one for the l prime that this is the same as the case for the, this one when we use uh, linearly polarized light this selection rule uh, must be satisfied and this is a case of the linearly polarized light the selection rule is slightly changed at the circularly polarized light because uh, circularly polarized light is expressed 
as this one. So the direction of the electric field is changed like this one. Then the, this uh, mount becomes a calculation of this one. Since the spherical harmonics of the y1 minus 1 is proportional to the cosine phi minus i sine phi, therefore this is proportional to the x minus i y. So the same as this one. Therefore, for the circularly polarized light, the transition probability is a slightly different uh, concerning the magnetic quantum number m. In this case, m prime must be the same as m minus 1. In the case of the left circular polarized light, since uh, this is positive plus and therefore the uh, calculation becomes like this one here. Then m prime must be same as m plus one. So the helicity is changed, then the selection rule also changes. So I explained selection rule for linearly polarized light and circularly polarized light. So the rest one is unpolarized. In the case of the unpolarized light, we consider the sum of one, two, three. Therefore, we can conclude that the selection rule is L prime is L plus minus one. This is a common or irrespective of the linearly or circularly polarized light, also for the unpolarized light. And M prime is M or M plus minus one. That is uh, unpolarized right? uh, selection rule. This view graph shows a qualitative understanding of the selection rule for the orbital quantum number L. When we consider the space inversion operation, x, y, z is changed to minus x, minus y, and minus z. Azimuthal quantum number or orbital quantum number L determines the parity of the wave function of electron. When the orbital uh, quantum number L is even, the parity is even. Because for the S or D orbital, the sign of the wave function does not change. In this case, the parity is called as even. This is an equivalent situation. The value is the same irrespective of the space inversion operation, like this. On the other hand, when the orbital quantum number L is odd, the parity becomes also odd. We consider the p orbital, like this one. So in the case of p orbital, when the sign is switched, then the sign of the wave function also changes, like this. Therefore, in this case, the parity is odd. So then we consider the electric dipole transition uh, by using the normal coordinate x, y, z. So, we need to calculate the integral of this function. We can say that if the parity of this product is even, uh, this integral becomes finite. And parity of this product is odd, the integral becomes zero. Ah, <laughs> z should be around by here, <laughs> sorry. And uh, uh, z is odd, then the combination of the wave function phi i and phi f must be the even odd or odd even combination. Otherwise, uh, integral becomes zero. Integral becomes zero means uh, transition prob probability becomes zero. Therefore, we can understand L prime must be different by one. Okay, this is a qualitative understanding. Okay, so then I briefly showed another uh, transition. So I I have explained the uh, uh, first term. I briefly touched the second term. So in this case, we need to set the direction of the propagation and the electric field. Yeah, for instance, uh, in this case, the second term uh, can be uh, calculated as this one. And uh, 
calculation is going on, uh, we get uh, this term by putting the, this one. So this is the same as uh, LZ. And we need to calculate this one. But uh, so in order to know the nature of the second term transition, we need to evaluate this amount. And this one can be ex uh, calculated as like this. And we remind that the computation relation of the coordinate and electron Hamiltonian can be expressed as momentum component. And uh, we get uh, this result. And the uh, x component can be commuted with the y component. Then we get uh, this, this result. So please see the first term of the, this one. Then the second term can be uh, evaluated as this one. So this is the difference from the first term dipole transition. So the, this one, first term, is called as a quadrupole, electric quadrupole transition. And second term stands for the magnetic dipole transition. <laughs>